All right. Uh, moving on to uh, our brief introduction to Stats Unit. Um, I'm very, very excited about showing you a little bit of Stats. I think it's very useful, um, and I hope really you you, uh, you will enjoy it. I know many of you, many of you are, uh, you know, signed up for um, Stats class next year. So hopefully, this will not scare you away. I think it's pretty fun actually, and again, it's very useful. It's very relevant uh, to our life. Okay. Anyways, so we are gonna start with descript uh, descriptive measure of data in stats. So descriptive. So what that means again, descriptive measure means uh, well, it it, it is some uh, measurement that help us to understand the overall picture of data. Okay. So. This really um, helps us to understand um, overall picture or give us some information, you know, overall picture of data. Something that we're interested to, um, um, to understand. Like many of you would ask me, you know, what's the uh, average for the test, right? So. Again, the test test scores would be the uh, population, right? That's everybody's test score. And when you ask me for the mean or the average, really that is a descriptive measure of data, right? It, it's some value uh, that gives us some understanding of the overall picture, right? the average. Uh, obviously, average is not the only descriptive descriptive measure. Um, we are going to be looking at two different ones today. So there is the measure of central tendency. This is used. So today will be quite a bit of definition because um, it's really something new, right? It's a new unit. Um, it's used to describe the average. So it's like, or you just asked me, what you would just ask me, right? what's the average for the uh, test score? Uh, the average or central value there is more than one way to describe the middle, right? Average, sure, is one of the way, um, but it's not the only way uh, of the data. Okay, so that's the measures of central tendency. You can see down here, there are three different ones that we're gonna be looking at today, the mean, the median, and mode. Uh, you might have already heard all three of them. You might not, that's okay, we'll go over them today anyways. Uh, measures of dispersion. So this is used to describe how spread out or dispersed the data is. Okay, so if you think about it, uh, if we talk about mean or the average um, of two numbers, like zero and 100, the average would be 50. But you can see it's actually very spread out. So, you know, the mean of 50 might not be a good um, description of what the class average is. However, you have, if you have two people both score 50, then that's a good indication, right? Then 50 is a nice, well, it's not a nice average, but it's a nice number to describe it, right? Whereas, and then in that case, the it is the, um, the value is actually not dispersed from the mean, from the average. Right? It's not. It's not very spread out at all. So in that case, the measure of dispersion will be like close to zero or a very small number because it's very close to the average. Whereas if you have two test scores of zero and one hundred, yes, the average is fifty, but then you can see it's very spread out. In that case, uh, the the, you know the number that describes the dispersion will be large okay so we are going to be looking at the range and the standard deviation today okay to describe the uh, dispersion okay so these are the four five things that we're going to be looking at mean um, as many of you already know mean uh, is the average right so this is the average uh, average can't spell average this is the average. Um, there are actually two kinds of mean. And you, you should know how to find the mean, right? You take the total 
of the data values and then divided by how many how many data points they are and so that's how you find the mean um, there is actually uh, mean there are two kinds of mean okay mean of population and there is also the mean of sample okay mean of the population is denoted by the symbol mu Okay, that is that means the mean of population, whereas the mean of the sample is going to be x bar. Okay, so let me talk about the difference between population and sample. So, for example, if again, if we are interested in, um, let's say, the average or the mean of the test scores for our class, then the population would be everyone's, everyone's um, test scores. Okay, that's the population. Whereas the sample, it could be like, uh, let's say we're looking at the, so, so again, that's the population. And within that population, we could take a sample. So for example, we might only take uh, the mean of uh, the people with last name A or with the last name F, with the last name A to F, right? So that, those would be the sample. So the students with last name A to F, their test scores would be a sample of the population because population is everybody, right? Sample is only some portion of that population, okay? So then the mean, uh, again, for the population is denoted by mu. That's the Greek letter for U, mu. Uh, the mean of the sample, we just denote it by X bar, okay? So that's mean, median, uh, hopefully that's easy to understand. Median is the middle value. Middle value of data after you sort the data in numerical order. Oops, cannot spell numerical. In numerical order. Okay, so you go from the smallest to the biggest, and the number in the middle is median. Okay, so the value right in the middle would be median. Okay. Uh, mode, mode is, uh, so actually, um, these are actually quite, you know, they are used quite often. Okay, we either talk about mean or median most of the time. Sometimes we talk about mode, but this is. Um, you know, we don't really use it very much, um, but it is something that could be useful. Mode is the value that occurred most frequently. Most frequently. So again, using the test score as an example, if we have like 30 students in a class and 20 of them scored 100%, then the mode would definitely be 100 okay because that's the one that occurred most frequently um, is that a good indication maybe you know of the test scores in this class maybe maybe not um, but that could be a number to describe right median uh, if you list them out from the lowest to the highest the median could be 50 is that the best indication who knows right it, it, it really depends on the situation okay um, okay range um, range so these three these three are the measure of central tendency and these two are the measure of this uh, dispersion so range is simply uh, the difference between maximum and minimum so um, the range so if the highest score of this test was 100 and the lowest score was 50 or maybe not 50, uh, let's say the lowest score was 60, then the range would be 100 minus 60, so the range would be 40. Okay, so that's that, that could be one way to uh, describe the dispersion of the test scores, okay? The difference between maximum and minimum. The other one we actually use quite, well, we see it quite often is the standard deviation, okay? And again, this measures, the, it measures how spread out, Uh, data is from the mean okay so notice range you're just talking about the difference between maximum and minimum 
standard deviation, you're actually looking at how spread out the data is from the mean. Okay, so this is related to mean. Okay, so the bigger the value is for the standard deviation, it means more spread out. Okay, the sp if the right because that's mean that means it is further away from the mean, right? So then that means it's you know you, you get quite a range of values, right? Different values, it, they are just far away from the mean. If the standard de deviation is small, that means everyone's test scores is cluttered together in somewhere in the middle, because the standard deviation is not big. So everyone's scores is close to the um, um, close to the uh, mean. Okay. So in the example I sh I mentioned earlier, if two people have test scores of zero and one hundred, sure the mean is fifty, but in that case the standard deviation will be large, right? So then you can tell, oh, okay, yeah, this is the mean of fifty, but then if the standard deviation is big, that means it's fifty, but then no, their scores are actually far away from fifty. Whereas the other in scenario, if two people both score 50, the mean is 50. The standard deviation in that case would actually be zero because they are exactly 50. Okay, in the other example, if you have 49 and 51, yes, the standard deviation, sorry, the mean is 50. In that case, standard deviation is gonna be very, very small because again, both scores are very close to the mean. Okay, so usually mean and standard deviation, they, they are like couples, they go together. Okay, because, um, having a mean uh, there could be different scenarios but if you have a standard deviation attached to it it gives you more um, idea of what the data looks like I guess okay um, so now again because mean there are two different kinds of mean population and sample so same thing for the um, standard deviation there are two kinds there is the pop uh, sorry standard deviation for population so population standard deviation population standard deviation uh, denoted by sigma and this is equal to okay this formula is a little bit um, well it's much longer um, and I'll explain to you what it is um, because there's the uh, sig capital sigma inside the square root um, square root and you might not know what that means so this symbol sigma means the sum okay and x minus mu I probably should say um, yeah, I'm gonna call it xi. Okay, xi. So you're t what essentially what this does is you taking every single data point, you minus uh, the population mean, and then you're gonna square that. So sorry. Okay, you take each one of those um, data points, minus the mean, take the score, and then you add all those values together divided by n okay you know what this might be confusing i'm going to show you the example down below um, after i show you the standard uh, the uh, sample standard deviation Sam sample standard deviation it's actually the same formula we denote this by s okay it's exactly the same formula except i guess you can guess that instead of using mu you we are going to use x bar okay so really that's the only difference okay so re we replace mu with x bar for sta sample standard oh sorry m minus one as well okay not just n so that's the difference i guess we take m minus one instead of, we divide it by m minus one instead of n okay um in this course because it's just a brief introduction okay it's not just introduction it's a brief introduction to stats um, we are not going to look at st sample standard deviation we are only going to focus on population standard deviation Okay, so we are only going to uh, focus on the population. Okay, so as I promised, I'm going to show you this example. Here is the 2019-2020 uh, Toronto Raptors uh, roster. Uh, I should say Toronto Raptors roster. What is the mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation of their ages? Okay, so this we are going to. So we are interested in. Um, um, their age, right? The age of the uh, Toronto Raptors. Um, so again, these are the descriptive uh, data or descriptive measures. Okay, so we use these to describe their age, right? Okay, one at a time. Mean. Okay, you should know how to find mean. Mean simply means you add up all these data points. So 22 plus 23 plus 26 plus 33. 
I should probably go down in the column. Ah, whatever. 33 plus 22, 24, 34, 26, 23, 26, 25, 25, 30, and 25. Then you divide this by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14 people, right? This would give you the mean, okay? Um, Okay, so after I put this into the calculator, the mean is exactly 26 years old. Okay, so that's the mean. Okay, median. Median, again, that means we are going to sort this list of ages in numerical order. Okay, so we're going to go from the youngest. Um, I'm going to pause the video and I'll do it in the background. You can also try it. Okay, give it a try. See what, how, what you get. Okay, so I would cross out um, each number as I write them down. So I make sure I don't miss out a number or if I, I don't count, you know, one age twice. Um, so here's the list. Um, again, you're looking for the middle. So what I would do, I would just cross them out, one from back, one in front, and then keep going, keep going. Okay, now you can see we have two of these. We don't actually have a middle number. So what we would do in that case is we take the middle two, add them together, divided by two, right? We find the mean of those two numbers. So in this case, now be this, I mean, this case is clear. Oh, sorry, media, not media. Um, in this case, it's quite clear. Um, it's gonna be 25. But again, however, if, if they are not the same, what you do is you take those two numbers divided by two. Okay, again, this time it's clear, it's 25. So the median is 25. The mean is 26. We can also find a mode. Again, mode is the one that occurred most frequently. I believe 26 occurred 20, uh, three times. So 26 would be the mode. Okay, 26 occurred three times. Oh, 25 also occurred um, three times. So the mode would be 26 and 25. Okay, we actually have two of them. Okay, we actually have two of them. Okay. All right. Oh man, definitely getting closer to summer. I get thirsty after like 15 minutes of talk. Okay, anyways, so these are the measure of central tendency, mean, median, mode. Mean is simply the average. Median is the middle value. Mode is the most frequent um, value, I guess. So in this case, we actually have two modes here, 26 and 25. Um, and they occur, just happen to be the mean and the median, okay? I did not set this one up, okay? Um, one thing you can uh, you should notice though is that there could be no mode as well, okay? So for example, if all these ages are different and there's no one that has more than, you know, that occur more than once, in that case, there's no mode, okay? Because every one of them just happened once. Um, but in our case, I mean, you, you could also have one mode. In our case, it was two modes. You could have three, four, and so on. Okay, range. Range is another one that's easy to do. Um, it is simply the maximum minus minimum. So range would be 34 minus 22. So the range is 12, okay? Range is 12. That's That tells us, you know, how far apart all, you know, from the youngest to the oldest, I suppose. Okay, standard deviation. So standard deviation, uh, mu, sorry, not mu, sigma. Recall this was given in a uh, formula, the sum, uh, the square root of the sum between the x's minus the uh, mean squared divided by, not divided by two, divided by n, okay? So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a giant square root symbol. Again, this sigma, okay, this sigma, okay, so that's a sigma notation in which you will learn in pre-calc, I think but anyways now you know okay I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you what that means Sigma means the sum okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each data point um, since I have written out here I'm just gonna take each one of them 22 okay I'm taking I'm taking the list from the median okay so 22 minus the mean which is 26 or not I'm gonna take from the mean okay and we square that okay so that's one of them now we're gonna keep going with the other one, so second point is 23 minus 26 squared. Keep going, 
Uh, what else? 26 minus 26 squared. You keep going. Uh, 26, 33 minus 26 squared plus 22 minus 26 squared plus. Okay, I think you know what I'm on what I'm doing now, right? So I'm gonna pause the video and then I'll I will come back after I finish writing. Okay, so again, you can see I'm taking every single one of these data points from the mean list. Okay, 22, 23, 26, 33, 22, 24, 34, 26, 23, 26, 25, 25, 30, and 25. I take each one of those minus the mean, which is 26, right? And then square that, add them together, and then divide it by, well, in this case, because there are 14 people, so we divide it by 14, okay? And then what you need to do then is put this into calculator, put this into calculator and see what you get. Okay. You know, you know what? I'm going to talk it through. Okay. I'm not going to stop the video. Okay. I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is just take one, each one of those and then square. Okay. 22 minus 26 is negative four. Now you can see positive, negative doesn't matter because of the square. And I mean, that makes sense because we want to, because the value could be bigger than the mean or smaller than mean. Right. So it does makes sense to square it, so we kind of ignore the negative sign and at the end we square root it right so the, you know this kind of makes sense okay anyways 22 minus 24 is negative 4 squared is 16. Uh, that's 3 squared that's 9 this is 0 um 33 minus 26 is 7 so square is 49 uh, that's 4 squared that's 16. that's 2 squared that's 4 this is 8 squared, 64, and that's 0 squared. This is 3 squared. This is 0 squared. And then we'll move on to the third row. That's 1 squared. That's also 1 squared. That's 4 squared. And that's 1 squared. And then divided by 14. Okay, so now I'm going to add these up. Um, that's 25, 74. You know, I'm just going to bring the calculator. 25 plus 49, 74. 74 plus 20, 94, 94 plus 64 is 158, 158 plus 9, uh, 167, 167 plus 3, 170, so 170, 186, 186 divided by 14, 186 divided by 14 is not a nice decimal. Um, and then square root that, you should get 3.64, okay? So in this case, the standard deviation is 3.64, okay? So the mean is 26, and the standard deviation is 3.64. Um, it's not, uh, you can't quite tell if, so basically what that means is that most players are with you know within the range between 23 years old and 29 years old okay i basically add one standard deviation to the mean and i take away one standard deviation from the mean to give me and that range will give me most of the uh, player's age um, we will talk more about standard deviation in the future okay not i don't think it's next class but anyways um that's it um uh, that's how you find the standard deviation. Okay, um, that's it for today's lesson. I hope um, it's not too confusing for you. Uh, again, these five different uh, measures are basically, again, they are just descript descriptive measures of um, our data. Uh, again, they give us information. Um, when, to e when to use the, uh, especially mean median mode when do we use which one uh, that really depends on the situation uh, for example if we talk about um, Canadian income average personal income we actually use median okay we don't use mean uh, and the reason is because mean is easily affected by large numbers and extremely small numbers okay uh, we know in a country we all have like super rich people they really bring the mean up okay so they actually increase the value of mean by a lot so mean in that case might not be a good indication 
of how wealthy you know uh, or how yeah how wealthy people is in Canada okay so in that case we use median as the uh, measure of central tendency the middle okay so it really depends and it depends on um, you know what kind of situation we're dealing with then we decide to use which one again we will talk um, you'll learn more about that if you actually take stats okay stats 12 or AP stats uh, but th this is just a brief introduction okay I hope you enjoyed the lesson I will see you next time